I hear people talk like Gary Vee and Tony Robbins and they ask, what is success? What's the definition of success? And a lot of people settle on the same answer and that is happiness. So today's video is with Moran Surf, an incredible teacher, incredible guy who's talking about exactly that. How do we achieve happiness? Today's video is sponsored by MulliganBrothers.com where you can get the new book. There's just a link down below. Um, it's just dropped, guys. It helps support this project. 100% of the profits go back to this. But before that, an age-old question that people want to know, people would love to know, from a guy who can tell you how to do it, how do we find happiness? Let's jump into the video. If, for myself and for many people who, who follow this channel, we, we have goals of five to 10 years from now. Um, the, the, ultimate goal or the, the big goal that's in the forefront of our mind um, as most successful people do what do you see from the people who have achieved those goals is like a common thread and a common link from the neuroscience side it, 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 it's a great question so, so I would say the kind of if people have been given diaries and questionnaires for a while where they were asked kind of what do you want in life I would boil down the answer to one word, happiness. That's the thing that uh, most people uh, say they want. They just have different uh, theories on what would give them that. If you ask people, okay, what would make you happy? A lot of people think that money made happy. They kind of list in the top five things, money. Uh, other people say relationship. Like if I just married the woman I love, or if I just found the guy that I uh, dream of, or if two of us would have kids, that's another kind of big theme uh, uh, among people who have kids. Uh, usually it's when the kids leave home, uh, when we get time for ourselves again, uh, finally when we retire. So there, you know, kind of like, depends on where you ask a person, you get opposite answers. Like I want kids or I want to out of it. But uh, either way, people have theories on what will make them happy. And unfortunately, most of the theories are not true. Uh, there's a name for that uh, in psychology, it's called the treadmill effect. You walk towards a goal, you get there, and you actually realize that you are in the same place that you were before because it's not it. Uh, for the most part, people who wanted money and got the money did not change their happiness. People who wanted uh, money and lost a lot of money did not decrease their happiness. People who got married did not, you know, there's a spike. If you wanted to uh, have a kid and you have a kid for a few weeks, months, days, you will have a spike in happiness. Very quickly, the case, if not to uh, where it below it was before, at least to where it was before. So I think that the goal of happiness is probably shared among all your audience members and viewers. How to get there is a different thing. And science can tell you, first of all, what doesn't get you there. The things I said before, money, uh, kids, relationships, aren't. What does? And those are sometimes mundane things people don't uh, believe in, or even if they believe, say, yeah, yeah, come on, but not me. Like, I will need the money, or fine, but I'm not willing to do it. And, and for an example, uh, sleep, high quality sleep. If you go to sleep every day in good time and spend many hours and not use a lot and so on, you're going to be happier in the days after a lot more than if you made a million dollars. Sounds to most people, ah, not me. But, the, the, the diaries we ask people to report, so there's that. Uh, exercise, you know, if you, if you, like healthy living actually contributes to happiness a lot more than a lot of things that are external. Uh, and in that sense, I think that if there's one take home message for your audience, is that they're probably aligned on the one word answer, which is they want happiness, or some people see it as the reverse, say minimize suffering. But either way, that's what people want. That's probably true for a lot of people. How to get there. It requires a little bit of work and knowing what's the right goal and how to get it. What I love is that the brain is so complicated, like what we're talking about is so complicated, but the the way of not fixing it, but the way of getting the most out of it is very simple. Some of the stuff is really simple stuff, like exercise yeah. and sleep and diaries. I think simple as in weak, tangible, but I think for many people, those, those things are, are uh, they seem kind of, they say to say, okay, right now I have a nine to five job. When will I actually go to the gym? Or how can I? So in many ways, I think there's there's some people that find it kind of just they say I can't because of life. And even a lot of people who can, 
it kind of, you know, I, I was surprised, and that's gonna, uh, uh, I was surprised by how many wealthy billionaires that you see in the news and so on look unhealthy and unfit. So I you say, okay, like the, the, the people who work nine to five, they say, well, if I had time, I would definitely go to you. And then you see people that, you know, seemingly they have, and they also don't, because it doesn't, like, it's not just about the opportunity. You have to actually have your, the same brain that benefits, has to also want to take the effort. And a lot of us, no different scientists, uh, billionaires uh, are living in a world where it's very hard to do the right thing. We live in a world that's complex. There are so many options, so many things, and a lot of frictions and a lot of barriers to getting simple things, some by design and some just because the world is rich of things. In theory, no one should be hungry in the world right now. There's abundance of food, but there are people who are hungry. And that's because of politics, and that's because of like the kind of way we created the world. And even among the people who live in, say, the US, where I live right now, because of the, so even though all the options are there, and it seems to be just go and choose, like the world is your oyster. We created a world that every restaurant has everything. That actually doesn't work with our brain. It likes simple things, easy things, and that's why we might not choose the right food in the restaurant, and we might not go to the right restaurant, and so on. And rich or poor, smart, stupid, uh, healthy, unhealthy, we somehow all live in a world that doesn't make it easy for our brain to do the right thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, is, it is one of those things where um, it's, we see people at the heights of success and we just assume that they've got everything sorted out and everything's fixed for them and they, they must have the answer to life and to the brain. And yeah, it, it's so easy to assume that. Um, the, the last one I wanted to ask you about is just the, the journey of what we perceive as success. For me, I've always said it, it's not the, the idea of having the Oscar or the, or the dream studio or whatever it is or the money. Um, it's, it's the process in between for me that's always given me happiness and made me feel not successful but content. Does, does that go back to the point of um, what was you were just talking about is it's not... It's, it's fine and happy, it's not that result, it's not that million dollars in the bank account. So I'll say two things, I'll, I'll give you the negative, I'll also give you a positive, like something that's something that, uh, that so yes, the, the negative is that for the most part, people have wrong theories and wrong models of what will make them happy, and they spend a lot of time and energy going there, and if they succeed in getting it, they realize it wasn't what they wanted, and if they fail, they constantly live their life thinking, oh, like it didn't happen to me. Either way, a misery, like no matter what, you're not getting happy, which is the goal that you actually have. So on that sense, I think pretty gloomy uh, uh, kind of answer. I'll give you the positive version. First of all, many people, uh, if you ask them about kind of happiness, uh, they have a kind of a, you know, a, a theory. When I'm going to be happy, I'm going to be just happy all the time, smiling like kind of a cartoon uh, character in a, in a kid's movie. The reality is that it's not how happiness looks. It's made of moments. And in that sense, many people, if they kind of pause and look at their life, they realize that they're already close to being there. It's just that they're not aware of it. Like I think there's, there's studies on like people being asked, how happy are you moment to moment? Turns out that most of us are kind of able to find joy in, in, in small moments, like when, when some, something nice happened. And in that sense, if you kind of lower this uh, expectation for like, peak happiness continuously forever, you will realize that you're already close to there and with a few tweaks, you can get more of it. So that's kind of one positive in, in just remove the label of I want to be happy, which is me being on a high constantly forever. That's never happening to anyone. When you get there, you just get used to it and that becomes your no norm and only something else. Never. So, okay, that's one. The other thing is of all the things that I could kind of recommend that, uh, that give you the experience of happiness moment to moment, like you don't need to get to a goal. It's relationship with people. So uh, a lot of people report that just having interaction with people, ideally positive ones, but even not always positive, just the, the mere interaction is really, really helpful to feeling happy. Time passes differently. You, your brain processes information differently. You have to tell your story and load memories and change them. All of those things are enough to actually affect our brain positively. So if you're looking for a way to kind of right now get this long lasting feeling of happiness that people imagine, I would say focus on having 
positive relationship in your life that you cultivate and interact with often. And you will, when you look back at the last week and you say, okay, what happened? You say, oh, I was happy 90% of the time. And because I spent 90% of the time with people, and that, that, that would be closest to what people have in mind as a theory of happiness. Thank you so much to Moran Surf. Um, for me, it is a pursuit of happiness. And I know it sounds cheesy, but that's exactly what it is. The journey of trying to be successful is what I enjoy the most. It's what makes me happy. The pursuit, the grind, the graft, the hustle, um, the sleepless nights, the achieving the small goals, um, making someone's day for your work, your art. The pursuit of it is creates happiness in me. Pursuit of success creates happiness. And I wouldn't do this if I was sad all the time. Now you're gonna have down days, that is the truth. But if you are finding yourself most happy when you wake up and you get to go do your job or go do your work or do your artistry or do your passion, then I think you are winning. And that is what all life is about. I think we also get stuck in the end goal as well. Like, don't get me wrong, our goals are to have BAFTAs, to have a, another studio, to have multiple award-winning films. And like, what you don't want to do is get so invested in those goals, those end goals, that you rely on them for happiness. That when, I'll only be happy when I win the BAFTA. But at the same time, you don't want to not rely on those goals that you're not being pulled forward, propelled forward by them. So there's a balance. There is a huge balance with it. But ultimately, happiness is achievable in this world of success, entrepreneurship, artistry, sport, is possible. And for me, you find that by loving the journey. So if you love the journey, you enjoy the journey, then you can't go wrong. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you enjoyed it, consider going over to mulligamorris.com and supporting us. Um, and consider going over to my Instagram, at Jordan Mulligan Brother, and saying hello. Have a blessed and productive day, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.